Today, we are going to make cabbage steaks. I'm going to make the cabbage steaks and show you how it's done. And then at the end of the video, we'll talk about some new things that we learned in the video. We'll talk about some new words that you learned in the video. And we'll talk about some grammar and some expressions or idioms in English that are related to the new words. So don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and let's get started! Today we are making cabbage steaks. You will need one cabbage, some olive oil, salt, pepper, and some garlic. First, we're going to cut the cabbage into steaks. Two cabbage steaks. Oh, that one's perfect. Now we'll try the other side. The middle is really hard to do. Sometimes I don't cook the middle in this way. And we'll try one more. Let's see if we can do it. It's getting a little hard to keep it steady. Almost, almost got it. There we go. Now we have six cabbage steaks. Next, we're going to peel the garlic. Hmm. Oh, this one doesn't look very good. Hmm. We'll throw it in the trash. Let's try this one. Oh, it looks much better. Now we cut the ends off of the garlic. Okay. And throw those in the trash. And now we mince the garlic. Put the garlic in the bowl. We need one fourth cup of oil. Some salt. I don't know how much. And we need some pepper. Stir them. Stir the oil, garlic, salt, and pepper. 
put aluminum foil on a baking sheet like this. First, we need to use cooking spray. Now, we put the cooking steak, the cabbage steak down and we brush the mixture over the top. And then we're going to flip it over like this. We put it in the oven for 28 minutes. Now that you know how to make this food, let's talk about some of the words that we learned in the video. Also, why am I suddenly dressed up? I don't know. I was bored. So, let's talk about some idioms and new words. Ready? Salt and pepper. Usually, when we say these words, we're talking about things that we put in our food, right? Like, I have pink salt. I don't have any pepper. My husband used it and forgot to tell me. But, when someone has gray and white hair, we say, we call it salt and pepper hair. For example, if they ask me, what color hair does your mom have? Uh, she has salt and pepper, which means she has gray and white mixed together. In the middle. So, in the middle usually is talking about um, where something is. Like I have three cookbooks. The red cookbook is in the middle. It's between the green cookbook and the blue cookbook. But we can also talk about it in relationships. It can happen in our family, in our friendships, even at work. And then it means that two people are fighting and they both want you to agree with them. Maybe your boss says, I don't like Christine. She's so rude. And she wants you to say, yeah, she is rude. And Christine says, I don't like our boss. She is a jerk. And Christine wants you to agree with her. And so they are fighting and you are in the middle. I hate that, right? Steady. Steady is a word we use to describe something that doesn't move. For example, if I want to cut this garlic, I have to hold it steady. I can't be moving it all the time and try to cut it, right? No. It has to be steady. It has to stay in one place and not be moving. Steady. Peel. Peel means to take the outside off of a fruit or vegetable. For example, we peel garlic by taking the outside off. We can also peel potatoes and take the brown part off of the potato, or we can peel a banana. We have a funny, maybe not funny, we have a mean American saying. Um, if someone is really sick and probably going to die, or really old and you know they're going to die soon, we say they have one foot in the grave and the other on a banana peel. A grave is the place we put a body when someone dies in the ground. Um, and a banana peel, you know, they're slippery. They make you fall. 
So one foot is in the grave, the other is on the banana peel, and they're about to fall into the grave. It's actually really mean, um, but we say it. Cut off. We used this in the video when we were talking about cutting off the bottom of the garlic, right? But we use this phrase in a lot of other ways in English. For example, if you are giving someone money and then you stop, that means that you are cutting them off. You're stopping the money. We can also cut off people from our lives. That means we don't talk to them anymore. We don't spend time with them. We don't answer their messages. We cut them off. We can also cut someone off from their friends and family. That means that we put them in a place that they can't talk to anyone. Like if my mom comes to live with me and I don't give her a phone and I don't let her friends visit, she is cut off from the world. That's sad. I won't do that. You can also cut someone off when you're driving, but that's really hard to explain without, without toy cars. Maybe I'll buy some. Um, it means you're driving and you go in front of someone when you're not supposed to. It's rude. Don't do that. Um, some people also talk about cut off for turning things off. For example, cut off the light. Cut off the light. Mince. We talk about this when we're talking about garlic. Mince means to cut something into very, very small pieces. We minced the garlic to make it very small. But we also use this when we're talking about how we communicate. Um, if someone minces words, that means they say something um, in a really polite way that maybe you won't understand. Um, if someone does not mince words, what that means is they are direct. They tell you what they think. Um, and if it hurts your feelings, eh, okay. Um, so if someone does not mince words and you ask them, does my hair look okay? If they think that your hair does not look okay, they will say, no, your hair doesn't look good. If someone does mince words, then they would say, um, they would say, mm, maybe you need to brush this part. Maybe you could curl it. They, they think your hair looks bad, but they don't want to tell you that exactly. So they mince words. Stir. We talk about stirring things in a bowl, right? But you can also stir up people. You do this if you make them really mad. For example, we say, for example, if I insult someone, you're so ugly. I stir them up. They get mad. It's not a kind thing to do. Or if you are a kid and you're being mean to your brother, your mom may say, don't get your brother all stirred up. Meaning, don't make him so mad. Do you stir people up? Tell me in the comments. Brush. So, you know, we use this word when we're talking about hair. We brush hair and we use it when we're talking about teeth. I brush my teeth. We can use a special kind of brush to put oil or butter and spices on our food. In the video, 
I brushed the oil onto the cabbage steaks. Flip. This is a fun word. We used it in the video when we were flipping the cabbage steaks over. But did you know that people can also flip? And people can flip out. Sometimes we use this when we're saying a person gets really angry. Like if you do something really bad, your mom might flip out. Or we just say flip. Oh my God, your mom is gonna flip. Sometimes we also use that for when someone is really surprised though. Um, like, oh my gosh, I found my mom's favorite chocolate at the store today. She's gonna flip out. Meaning, she's gonna be really surprised and happy. So, these are the idioms and vocabulary that we learned in the video. Um, so, is there anything you would like me to make my next video about? Give me some suggestions in the comments. See you later!